transit full empties, non-containerized units, and, and then the total. So this is what we're doing, is we're breaking down here the, the way the traffic is made up, what you're doing in imports, what you're doing in exports, and we're talking about single moves. So if you've got a whole bunch of transshipments, yeah, when you, and we're, but we're talking about traffic, even a transshipment, that traffic is only one box. There's only one TEU, so it's traffic. When it's throughput, when it's volume across the key, then it's two moves, yeah? <clears throat> so, over the next uh, 17 to 23, Rick, you're moving me on very quickly. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it'll have to be quite quick. Um, yep. um, so, look, number of vessel calls, container carrying vessels. We split them down by sizes, because one of the things we're looking at within the standard is how the terminal performs over a long period of time. So we could get really good performance on a feeder vessel with 150 boxes. And we just stick a couple of trains over it, for, for, for an hour and a half, we're done. But if we've got a, a, a 4,000 move vessel, and because of our maintenance schedules, or because of the way we, uh, we run the traffic, or the way we service the yard, we're continually getting hold-ups and stops, then we start to see a fall-off in, in the quality indicator. So we look at terminals in terms of the, not only just the number of vessels they do and the number of moves they do, but the number of vessels that are doing a certain number of moves. Mm -hmm. Because a 4,000 move vessel will demonstrate reliability and quality over a longer, continuous cycle period of time. It, the the 4,000 uh, move vessel will show that you, you're up with your maintenance, you're keeping the, 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 uh, your, your equipment well maintained. It'll show that you can manage safely and without uh, hold ups for accidents and safety and so on. Uh, a, a less than 750, you can get away with it. You can go four hours and then have a crane breakdown but you've already finished the ship, so okay, that doesn't count. Yeah? <coughs> so it's a demonstration of reliability on long periods of cycling. Okay, so we look at the number of barges called and the number of container carrying barges. Uh, the next, all right, okay, so this is the, the next um, 24, is it? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. so we, we're just running down through through these, Wait, the, what, 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 can, what you can see within the master tables, which uh, Gustav was having a look uh, there, and within the standard itself, all these are clearly defined. There's a lot of um, uh, formulae that go with them. We'll see a form of one of the formulae later on. I'll just let you have a look at these as I talk through with some, some of this stuff. So the formulae are to enable your, your software, your, your computer engineers, your IT guys, to um, develop the programs within your TOS to actually be able to develop a, a, a CTQI button. I mean, that's the ideal, is, is where you end up with after, after 365 days, you've got a CTQI button, you go, Dink, how did I do? The TOS pulls out all the information for you, you can cross-check it, and the, audit, the auditor itself, if you're going for certification, will come in, and he will look at the, where's, where's the evidence for, for the certification? But um, if you're doing it just as a, a performance, um, measurement and a continuous improvement tool, um, which is the way most people seem to be using it at this time, um, is you can pull up the information either daily, weekly, monthly, um, and at some terminals it's become this, it's the subject of the Monday morning meeting. What are we going to do this week? Okay, let's see how we performed over this past week. Where were the bottlenecks? Where were the problems? Okay, we can identify them using uh, the comparison and balance scorecard. These are these are the things we need to sort out this week, and you know, this is where you, you have the operational expertise, uh, or you bring in consultants to help you do. <laughs> okay, so we're looking how uh, through the performance measures. So we're looking at the, the number of average moves per truck. So we're looking, you know, truck comes in, picks up one, drops off one, mm -hmm. drops off two, picks up one, whatever. You know, that's a <clears throat> That will give you a certain amount of time that he's going to be in the terminal. Now, what we do do within the uh, performance <coughs> is uh, is we look at how your gate arrangements are. So, which side of the gate do customs pull things for examination? Which side of the gate is your canteen? Okay, I've been to terminals where the uh, you know, they they have a very long period of time for trucks on. You know, on the inside of their gate, because they have a canteen on the inside of their gate, they provide a park-up area, and the guys who haven't got another job to go to, so the boys have not, not got another job to go to, they park up in the, uh, in the waiting area, they go to the canteen, they spend a couple of hours there, and they really kill 
your road, <coughs> your road transport service index. Okay. Um, so what we do look at is we do look, you, know, you look at your configuration of your gates. You look at where the customs uh, intervene. You look at where the canteen is. Uh, you look at what the, the drivers themselves are doing, and from that, what you do is we just swizz through to an example of the um, road transport. There you go, puff. So, not that one. Da -da 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 -da. No, yes, yeah, I'm looking at the RT, the road uh, transport. So, we, we've just got some examples here of the master tables. And, and some of the examples of the waiting that goes on depending on the age of the equipment, um, how many of them there are, and, and so on. How we do, have you got? Uh, not in this deck. It's not in that deck? Not this deck. Okay. But you can maybe use this to show the master table. Okay, so an example of uh, a part of the master table is here we're looking at the superstructure. Okay? Now, so this, is, this is where CTQS could be used um, uh, as, as a tool for planning. So if you're setting up a terminal with the idea of of certifying for, for, for CTQS or CTQI uh, very quickly, um, you could decide to spend a lot more money than you would otherwise spend on getting the equipment that will get you the marks that you need on band scorecard to, to pass with it almost immediate effect. Um, but what we do is we, we look at the number of gantry cranes that there are, how old they are, so there's a weighting in the, in the point score. Uh, depending on the age. We look at whether you've got straddle carriers and their age, whether you've got automatic guiding vehicles and their age, um, RTGs or RMGs. Well, whatever equipment you have, there's a different weighting depending on, on the equipment. So that we are then, we're, 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 we're um, reducing some of the differences that there are between the different types of equipment and the way in which they perform so that you can still compare. So it's a, it's a formula for for reducing out differences between different types of equipment. So, I mean, here what we can see is we can see the different weighting factors here. And of course, the point score is, is varies according to age. So you get the most number of points from the nearest equipment, obviously. Yeah, the least, that's the least um, likely to have the downtime for repairs. Unless, of course, it is in the forefront of modern technology, in which case you can spend a lot of time fixing the bugs. So if you've got some tried and tested equipment that's brand new, you'll get the top marks, yeah? um, and then it will be weighted on the scorecard depending on the type of equipment it is. Okay, so if we look at so some of the things we, we can't uh, have control over as, as a container terminal, um, but which port authorities do have a part to play in, um, the external factors. Now these are evaluated and weighted and scored, um, but they do not form part of the certificate if you intend to certify for CTQI. If you're just if you're doing the, the uh, CTQS, then really you have a look at this so that you're aware of it, but you're not going to be auditing it or you know, you're, you're just happy you have to look at it properly once every year. Um, as I've got the rail connectivity and, and all, all these sort of things, and one of the things is is we have we operate our terminal operations, seaside operations, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, some places we shut down for one day a year. Um, other places we never shut down. Okay, um, but internally, what happens? The warehouses, do they open, do they operate twenty four seven? Okay, the rail. How? how you know, when? When can we get rail slots for for, for rail trucks? Uh, particularly here in Europe, where it, you know the the network starts to become uh, quite full up, and you end up with your night slots. So you you get a whole raft of, of rail traffic lined up to go out or come in overnight when the passenger uh, traffic is low. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's probably me with my UK hat on at the moment. Um, so we look at those external factors, and then we have the management system, okay? So and a checklist for the management system. So those of you who have uh, ISO 9000, so I'll be very familiar with the with the checklist, with the checks and balances, with balances in the ways of reporting um, non non conformance and all those sort of things. Uh, showing and demonstrating that you're doing the uh, the audits and that you're managing the system effectively. So I think 